Hi, this is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts. Matt Kluskowski recently had a post on his website, uh, Lightroom Killer Tips, where he talked about uh, a link to a, a package that you could use with Lightroom version 3 to visualize how pictures would look uh, framed and hanging on the wall of a room. And that got me thinking about how I might approach that using either Lightroom or Photoshop, but also uh, with the ability to use my own pictures of either my own rooms or my clients' rooms rather than packaged rooms and just pictures of generic sofas or uh, generic rooms. So I'm actually approaching this in three separate tutorials. This is the first of the three where we'll walk through a couple different approaches using Lightroom. Uh, one approach is unique to just version 3 of Lightroom and then there's an another approach that you can use with earlier versions of Lightroom as well. It's not quite as flexible but it will get you there. Uh, the second video will look at how to do this in Photoshop using the vanishing point filter to get perspective uh, such as in this room and this is the the before and after of doing it in Photoshop versus Lightroom. And then in the third video, I'll walk through the action and the layer styles that I use to create these frames around the photos that are hanging on the walls. So with that, let's jump into the, uh, the first of the tutorials. And the first thing I discovered is if you want to do this in Lightroom, you really don't have control over perspective. Uh, such as you have here with converging lines and vanishing points off in the distance and so forth. So to work in Lightroom, it's really best if you can start out with a, a square on picture of a room. So I started with this picture, same room, uh, and this is without doing any lens correction or perspective adjustments, and you can see there's a few problems here. Uh, for quick and dirty work, this would be more than adequate. If you're working for a client and you want to have a little bit more polished presentation, you would probably want to take the time to go through the lens correction process to, in this case, there's some barrel distortion from the 24 to 105 zoom lens that I'm using. And then secondly, to adjust the horizontal and vertical perspective so that you get a nice square picture of this back wall. And we can look just very quickly. What I did was go through the um, develop module for this image and went to lens correction. The first thing I did was enable the uh, automatic lens correction and that pretty much got rid of the barrel distortion. And then the next thing I did was go to the manual tab and played with the vertical and horizontal and rotate controls until I was able to get the, the lines on this end wall as square as I could. With that done, uh, I've also got in this same folder some pictures that we might want to preview on the wall behind the sofa here. And the way to do that, and one way to do it, uh, they're all in the print module. So if we go to the print module, and here's one example of how this was done. And this particular approach will work in, uh, in Lightroom 3 only. And you can see that what I've done is selected a custom package. And let's just start from scratch. Uh, I'm going to select an, an 8 by 10 layout. And by default, it happens to come up in a vertical. So I'm going to go to the page setup and change my page setup to landscape. This gives me just a nice landscape view. Uh, 8 by 10 is a good size to work with, although in reality size does not really matter with this approach. Now what we've done here, we want to set up in the custom package. Let me turn off the identity plate. We don't need that right now. And now I'll go to custom package. And by default, it comes up with a number of settings that we don't need. So I'll just select these and press delete to delete the frames that are already here. And then the next thing I'll do is turn off the guides because we really don't need to see those. Now let's add an 8x10 
to the layout. And then let's put the picture of the room in that 8 by 10. Now the next thing we'll want to do, and let me turn off my watermarking, because again it's not really adding anything. Now for the picture we want to put over the sofa, I can just choose a smaller package size. And by default it puts it on the next page, but it is more than willing to put it right on the same page. Let me close the second page. And let's say we want to put this picture up on the wall. Just drag it up there, and there it is. I can change the size, make it bigger or smaller, move it around. If I wanted to experiment with, uh, with multiple pictures, I could make this one smaller, add another frame, again do the same thing, adjust these so that they're almost the same size, and maybe put a second picture over there and start to get some visualization of how this room might look with some artwork hanging on the walls. And again, I can make them bigger or smaller. Uh, it's You don't get an exact dimension, but I know this sofa is about seven or eight feet long along the back. So these two pictures together would be about eight feet across. So I know each one's going to be about three and a half feet hanging in this size. So I can get a a rough approximation of size. Uh, if your if your goal is looking for you know finding the size that looks best first, and then figuring out what that size actually translates to in feet and inches, then this is a pretty good way to work. One thing that is missing from this is a frame, and so to kind of simulate a frame, we can add a stroke to the pictures and maybe select a black color and it does frame all of the images including the background image but that's okay it starts to give us a, a little better idea of what those pictures might look like with a frame around them so that's one approach using the custom package now unfortunately custom packages are only available in Lightroom version 3 so if you have version 2 of Lightroom, or if you're looking for a, a different way of approaching this, uh, you can do a single image. So let's start over. I'm going to go back to my preset here for uh, an 8x10. And again, we'll go to the page setup, change the page setup to landscape and we've got just one row, one column, and I'm going to make this picture quite a bit smaller. So I can make it smaller and I can move it around by playing with the uh, the margins here, the left and right, top and bottom, so we can move this picture not quite as intuitive, you can't drag it around like we could with the uh, custom package, but you still can get it positioned. Now, one advantage of this approach, what we're going to do, rather than using another picture, uh, because the, the standard, standard package won't let you put a picture on top of a picture, but it will let you specify a custom identity plate. And normally the identity plate is something like your logo or a copyright symbol, something like that. Um, what I've got set up right here is just my Craig Stocks Arts logo. But we can go edit this identity plate and use something completely different. So let me locate the file. And the file I want to use is located, I've already created a JPEG of the, uh, the picture of the room that we were just using and it's stored here under photos, under find my way around room preview, and there's the JPEG. And I've got a warning saying that this file is very large. Do I really want to use it? Yeah, use it anyway. And just click OK. And now we need to make a few changes to the settings. We want the opacity 100%. We want the size 100%. And we need to rotate it, so there's no rotation. 
So there's our, our room now. And the last thing we want to do is render behind the image. And voila, there's our room. Here's our picture that would be hanging on the wall. And we can move it up and down with the top and bottom margin. I can make it larger. And I can also do the same, same technique with a border. Put a black border around it. Uh, maybe make the border a little bit larger and give it the impression of having a frame around it. And the advantage of this approach is that you can use it in earlier versions of Lightroom. You don't need version 3. Uh, if you want to look at different pictures, you can just, whichever picture is chosen is the one that will be shown in the preview. So it's very easy to see how different pictures will look in this, in this setting and allows you to do some previewing for clients. The drawback is that you can only look at one picture at a time. Uh, it starts to get really tedious trying to get two or three pictures uh, because you're constrained with working in rows and columns. It's not very flexible for multi-image layouts. Uh, with enough fussing with it, you can do it, but it's not real easy. So there's a couple of different approaches of how you can create the view in Lightroom. The real trick here is to have a view of the wall that is square straight on so you have a square wall and then a square picture and you can set up the preview just in Lightroom. Now in the next video we'll walk through doing a similar layout but using Photoshop and the advantage of Photoshop is by using the vanishing point filter we can work with perspective so that we have picture we don't necessarily have to have a square on picture of the room. So that will be in part two. Uh, thank you for listening. Again, my name is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts. Thank you and have a good day.